Hello, Cornerstone Kids. I am so glad you are here with us at Cornerstone Kids Online. We have some great things planned. You will learn this month's theme and memory verse, sing a great worship song, and watch this week's true Bible story. At the end, you will have a chance to pray together as a family. But before we get started, let's review our Cornerstone Kids values. Number one, love God. We are created to pursue an authentic relationship with our Creator. Number two, love people. We exist every day to demonstrate God's love to a broken world. And number three, love life. We experience life to the fullest as we walk in our God-given identity. If you do each of these things each day, you can change not only your life, but the lives of others. Have a great week. You're my calm in the chaos. My peace in the war You speak light into darkness You tell me I'm yours Only you, Jesus, are in control You are my every heartbeat Every breath that I breathe You're all I need You're all I need You speak life, sing your love over me Hey friends, I'm Haley, and all summer long we've been talking about what it means to make waves. Because what you do today can change the world around you. You can make waves when you're in water, of course, but you can also make waves on land by showing things like kindness, self-control, and goodness. If you're ever out on a boat, you see lots of waves. <laughs> Wind and waves make the boat move. You see that? By the way, how do you like my model coastline that I put together? I just had to share it. Look, it's got cows and hills and even a little lighthouse. Now, the lighthouse is key because if there's ever a storm and it's really dark out, the lighthouse helps people see where the coast is. It can actually save lives. Like, without a lighthouse, the boat could be in the middle of a terrible storm. Oh no, we're in the middle of a terrible storm. But with a lighthouse. Oh no! We're in a bad storm! 
Wait, what is that? A light in the darkness. We're saved! In today's story, you'll hear what Jesus said about how we can shine a light to help people in the world. There are lots of boats out there that need us. Help me! See? See you soon! The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, Chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Hey, have you ever heard the phrase, dark as night? When we talk about darkness, we usually just mean dim white. At nighttime, there's a nightlight by your bed, a hall light on somewhere, maybe a light over the kitchen sink when you get a drink. If you step outside at night, there's a porch light. Street lights probably mark the way through your neighborhood. And if you live in or near a city, the sky itself glows at night. Even if the power goes out, there's always a flashlight or phone light handy. But now, I want you to think about a time before electricity. The time when Jesus walked the earth. The sun is slowly setting. It dips closer and closer to the horizon. And then suddenly, it's dark. Really dark. <laughs> Deep pitch black. So dark, you can't even see your own fingers wiggling in front of your face. There's no light switch to flip. But if you're prepared, you can light a lamp. Whoa, that's better. Oh, in Jesus' time, many homes had small lamps like these that burned oil drawn up through the wick. Now, you can't get much done around the house holding an open flame in one hand. So in the main room of these houses, you would find a lamp stand. Now the whole room is lit up, not just for you, but for everyone else. Imagine in the same way you have several houses. A town, each home lighting a lamp one by one. Soon, that whole city glows with light. And if that city is high up on a hill, it becomes a bright beacon of light for travelers caught out in the dark night. Immediately, they can see a safe place and set their course in the right direction. Okay, now, with all that in mind, Listen to what Jesus told a group of his followers as he sat up on a hillside. You are the light of the world. Think about that. In a very, very dark world, you are like a lamp that allows others to see. Just like the moon reflects the sun, you can shine Jesus' goodness and light to brighten the world around you. You shine light with acts of kindness and compassion. You shine light when you choose joy in tough situations. You shine light when you make peace while others are taking sides. Jesus went on to say, A town built on a hill can't be hidden. Also, people do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do, and they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. Now you may be wondering just how far your small light can shine, but thankfully, none of us is called to spread light on our own. Each of us is designed to reflect a specific part of who God is. When we reflect God's light through acts of goodness, our small point of light joins up with light reflected by other Jesus followers in our neighborhoods, towns, cities, countries, all across the world. So whenever the world seems dark, remember what Jesus has already said is true about you. You are the light of the world. And with the power of God's spirit, you can spread the light of God's goodness anywhere you are and anywhere you go. I love these little guys. I love catching them. It's, it's one of my favorite summertime activities. Mm. This one here is a lightning bug. And this little guy is a firefly. <laughs> uh, uh, aren't those the same thing? What? No. No, that's ridiculous. 
No, no. I mean, they, they're called different things depending on where you live. Like some, some areas call it a firefly. Some areas call it a lightning bug. They're, they're the same. No, I mean, just look at them. Look, look, look at them. They're, they're totally different. I, no, they're the same. Look closer. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm going to prove to you this, that you're just being silly. That they're the exact same thing. <laughs> Lightning bug? Lightning bug. Are you sure you want to do that? I must know. Firefly! John. And I'm Brandon. Welcome to the So-and-So Show. You know, it's another beautiful summer day and we're super excited to be here with you. Sure are. But you know, it feels like we're missing something. It does? Or someone who knows oh. stuff. Hey, yo! Hey, it's Leonard. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So good to that have you. Good. What? It smells like cottage cheese in here. You guys eating some? No. No. No? Uh, so, Leonard, uh, for, for anyone who hasn't met you yet, why don't you tell us who you are and what you know? Oh. <clears throat> I am Leonard Fortescue, and I am a professional metal detectorist. I forge the sandy beaches of the world with my trusty metal detector here, Camilla. <laughs> You find anything good lately? Are you kidding me? <laughs> the sea turtles ride on the back of dolphins? No. Well, of course they do. What do you think dolphins got those fins for? So they can grab a hold, you know, and go through the waves. Woo! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what, 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 what did you find that was so good lately? Oh, well, well, the other day, I was doing what I usually do, you know, just scanning and scanning. When this big old wave came up and went a howl, got my socks all wet. So I decided to move a little higher up the beach when all of a sudden this family of seagulls came and they started attacking me. They were after my crackers. But then I got a little further up the beach and let me show you what I found. I found this family heirloom. Uh, uh, I think it's Look at that. Jewelry. Whoa. Whoa, is that a real ring? Well, of course it's real. Can't you see it? Look what? at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to sell it? Did you not hear me? I just said it was a family heirloom. Can't sell that. It belongs to somebody. Oh, well, that's that's really good of you, yeah. Leonard. Yeah. Well, thanks. How are you gonna How are you gonna find out who it belongs to? Well, it's easy. Watch this. Hey, people watching! If you're watching the show and you've ever lost anything, call the show right now. Cause maybe I found it and I can give it back to you. Uh, call the show. How, how can they call the show? We don't even have a phone here. Yeah. What? <laughs> Where did that come from? Howdy ho! How are you? Leonard and Camilla speaking. What'd you lose? Uh-huh. Oh, you didn't describe it for me. Oh! Oh, yeah, 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 I got that. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's see here. One partially chewed pack of chewing gum. Yeah, with two pieces missing out. That sound like you? <laughs> Perfect. Let me get it back to you. I I'll meet you tomorrow where old man Murray sells the seashell. All right, hey, <laughs> see you later. There's nothing that gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling than reuniting a man with his gun. Are you telling me that? You're in the hot seat, what'd you lose? Uh-huh, oh, yeah, 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 hang on, that, that, that sounds familiar. Here, hold, hold this for a second. Oh, okay. I got that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey. I got Mr. Twinkle Pinkle right here. Uh, where, where you wanna meet? London, England. Hey, how about I pop them in the mail? How's that? It's a deal, Neil. <laughs> Glad I can help. <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So, uh, Leonard, do you always give back the stuff that you find? Well, when I can, sure, you know, because it's not mine. It doesn't belong to me. Plus, I know what it's like to lose something, you know. So, you know, I like helping people find what they've lost. Seems like the right thing to do. Huh. Wow, you really are an inspiration for good, yeah. Leonard. Hey, well, don't leave out Camilla. She's yeah. the one doing all the finding. Yeah, you can't give her a little pat. She likes that. She... Hey. Yeah, Camilla, too. Yeah. Oh. Hello, this is Leonard. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. Ah. Uh -huh. Is it about the family hair uh the heirloom? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. I, I don't think I found that yet, but I'll keep looking, okay? All right, bye now. Well, what did they lose? Nothing. I didn't they didn't say anything. I think they may have lost their voice. You haven't found a voice around here anywhere, have you? I don't think that's how <laughs> lost voices work. Oh! I hear it! I'm coming for you, boys! It's Bible story time with Kellen! Hey friends! Hey, what do you got for us today, Kellen? Oh, uh, nothing too heavy. It's a pretty light message. That'll make more sense after you've heard the story. It's about light. It's a light message. Let's take a look. Jesus was an amazing teacher, so crowds of people followed him around to hear him teach. On one of those days, Jesus taught the people from the side of a mountain. What he said that day wasn't just for them, but it was for us too who listen to him now. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. What do you think about when you hear light of the world? Well, maybe you think about this. The sun shining over everything, literally bringing light to the entire planet. But Jesus said, you, you are the light of the world. Wonder what that means. How are you and me a light? Hmm? Jesus went on. A town built on a hill can't be hidden. First, Jesus was talking about light, but then he made people think of a different picture, one of a town built on a hill. And Jesus was right. If you lived in a town like that, it wouldn't be hidden. People would see it from miles away. So what do light and a town on a hill have in common? Well, they're both easy to see. They're out in the open. Then Jesus said, also, people do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. You wouldn't turn on a lamp and then put it under a bowl. If you did that, you'd be in the dark. The lamp wouldn't be able to do what it was made to do. So, if I'm a light and you're a light, what does that mean that we were made to do? Jesus says this, in the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do. Jesus was saying that you were made to do good things and out in the open too, not hidden so that people can see them. That could mean spending time with someone who isn't feeling well. It could mean sharing with others, sharing your food or your things. You could do good by spending time with your friends and family or you can make someone laugh. There are a lot of good things you can do in the world. You can shine a lot of light, but Jesus wasn't through. He had one more really important thing to add. He said, others will see the good things you do and they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. We do good in this world, not to make ourselves look good, but to show the world that God is good. Shining your light lets other people experience God's goodness through you, whether through acts of kindness or simply by being yourself. When you let people see the light that God put inside of you, you point people to God. Wow. That's awesome. I'm a light. And what am I going to do? Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine. Yeah. That's great. Because when you shine your light, God's goodness will spread like a wave throughout the world. Thank you, Kellen. Anytime. Bye, guys. I don't know about you, John, but I'm feeling like doing some good things. Oh, yeah? Like what? I'm not sure. You know, God created each of us differently, so the way I let my light shine might look a little different than you or, huh. or Leonard or, or the people watching. Oh, that's true. You know what? Let's ask them how they shine their light. Hey, reveal the question. Yeah, how can you show God's goodness to others? Maybe there's someone you know that needs help with something or someone feeling lonely that you can be kind to. Or, or there's a, something specific you love to do and are really good at. You can use your talents and passions to express God's creativity and goodness. Oh yeah, like Leonard, he's got a talent for finding things that are lost. Yeah. You know, I wonder if he ever found the owner of that ring. 
We'll probably never know. Yeah. Oh, I got oh! it! Yeah, talk to me! Oh, yeah, yeah, hang on. <clears throat> How many carrots? Okay, and the inscription? With warmest affection, Eaglebert V. Channel Smith the fourth. <laughs> Oh, that's it! Hey, oh, we got a winner! <laughs> okay, Mrs. Chandler Smith, where would you want me to meet you? All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Brandon. And I'm John. Oh, <laughs> that was the so and so show. Give us a call sometime. No, Bye! No, 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 we don't need that. I found this honeydew. That's, what? It's a cantaloupe. Yeah. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. It is a cantaloupe? It's a cantaloupe? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Is that a honeydew? No. I got these coins. So if you lost these coins and you're from the year 1723, <laughs> then please call the show. Ah, look at this cat. It's kind of scary. Look at that. It's got a squished face. I think it ran into a door a couple times. <laughs> so if you're looking for a cat that's got a squished face, that's run into a door a couple times, and then you decided to go to the taxidermist, I got your cat right here. <laughs> then I got this giant popsicle. <laughs> <laughs>